Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, and what I would like to do with you in this video is talk about waves. The first goal that I have for you uh, is we want to be able to distinguish the behaviors of P and S waves in Earth's interior. How do P waves behave? How do S waves behave? Um, and uh, you know how how are they like built differently? How are they? How do these waves act differently in Earth's interior? The other thing that we want to be able to do once we understand that. We want to be able to use the behaviors of the P and S waves uh, in order to model the interior of the Earth. We want to be able to look at P waves and S waves and say, well, how is the Earth built based on that information? So this is kind of a complicated subject, but we're going to try to sort of, sort of boil it down into something that's, that's easy to understand. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to appeal to our simulator, uh, our, our size, uh, seismometer uh, uh, simulator that we, uh, uh, that we use in order to figure out, well, how do these waves behave and, uh, and what does that tell us about the inside of the Earth? So here is our model of the Earth. You can see here is our, our nice hemisphere of the Earth. Uh, at this white little circle is uh, the focus of an earthquake. So this is where an earthquake is occurring. It looks like it's near Indonesia. Um, and uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to sort of straighten out the Earth so that we only see uh, sort of a cross-section of it. We don't have to worry about the surface too much. I'm going to move this graph out of the way. Uh, and, and with this, this um, model of the Earth, what we want to be able to do is to figure out how do the waves uh, behave, uh, and, uh, and what does that show about the, the interior of the Earth. So I'm going to make a few selections here to make sure that everything looks straight. So I'm going to make sure we're sped up a little. I'm going to pick the right uh, wave setting, shadow zone only, otherwise it'll get a little confusing. And uh, let's just go ahead and watch and see if an earthquake happens at this, this dot, the focus of this earthquake, how do these different waves behave? So I'm going to go ahead and create an earthquake. And I'm going to pause here. And right away, we can see that the P waves and the S waves, whatever these are, they behave differently. Now, uh, I'm going to zoom in here a little so that we can see what's going on. So as we watch here, these P and S waves, um, the P wave has traveled twice as far as the S wave in the same amount of time. And if we understand the way that velocity works, velocity is just distance divided by time. Well, since the P wave traveled about twice the distance as the S wave in the same amount of time, that means the P wave is about twice as fast. It's moving twice as, as fast as the S wave. So that's the easiest thing to recognize. Well, the P waves move really, really fast. And explaining why is a little bit complicated, uh, which we, is a bit above our pay grade. Um, but uh, uh, what I want to do here is I, we want to start looking at, okay, the P wave moves faster, the S wave is slower. Great, we've established that. What happens when they start to interact with the outer core here of the Earth, when they start to hit this, this zone uh, of, of the outer core? We don't really know what the outer core is made of. We don't even know what the mantle is made of, for that matter. But let's just kind of watch these waves and, and see if we can infer what's going on uh, with the outer core when we see these, these waves striking uh, that part of the, the Earth. So I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit more. And if you hear these little beeps and boops, all that that is, those are, that's the sound of the waves striking the seismometers on the Earth's surface, which we don't really need to worry too much about that. Uh, so try not to get distracted by those sounds. But we're going to go ahead and let these waves keep moving. And I noticed something right away that you should notice too, I'm hoping. And that is that the P wave, after it hits the outer core, notice it, it bends, it flattens. And if we zoom way in here, and if we really get a close look at what's going on with these, these waves, we can see that there's a very pretty sharp bend there where this has occurred. Um, this, this wave has struck the outer core at an angle, and it bends. And if you remember from, uh, uh, from our laser lab, looking at what the laser light did when it struck a prism, is that the laser light bent exactly like this wave is bending as it passes through the outer core. What's important about that is that this tells us right away the outer core is made of a different medium than the mantle is. It's made of a different state of matter. The P wave moved through the mantle, but then when it hit the outer core, suddenly it bent. So the outer core is made of something different than the mantle. We don't really know which is which. We don't know if they're solid, liquid, gas. We don't really know. All we know is that they are different. So uh, I can zoom out a little bit more here, and we can continue to watch what these, uh, these waves do as they travel. All right, we notice a few pretty odd things here. 
uh, one of them, uh, look at the P waves here, and notice that the P waves have actually started to break up from each other. Uh, this P wave traveling in the mantle has actually broken off from the P waves uh, that it was connected to in the mantle. So not only did it get bent, it's pointing in a different direction, it actually broke away from them. And this, this wave front uh, is actually now a separate one from this one. Pretty interesting. So these two waves have been broken by that outer core and they're traveling in different directions. But even weirder is if you look at this S wave, check this S wave out, it has actually stopped very abruptly. Uh, it's just done. It has died. The wave is gone. It is done. And uh, what this indicates to us is that there's something very important about our outer core uh, in which S waves cannot travel through it, and yet the P waves can. In any case, the P waves have also been bent, they've been refracted, which means the outer core and mantle are different um, media. And whatever uh, medium the outer core is, the S waves cannot travel through it. They can't travel through that outer core. So uh, a couple of basic conclusions that we've reached. And so let's start talking about why this is. Uh, and we're, we're actually, even before we do that, before we do that, I want to show you something uh, about how these waves travel uh, after they've gone all the way through the Earth. So I'm going to back off just a little bit here. Um, and so let's watch the rest of what these waves do. So we see our P waves are still traveling through the, the inner and outer core. The S waves don't travel through the outer core at all. And this is really interesting. On the way out of the outer core, the P waves actually continue. Uh, so they're able to travel into the outer and inner core and also out of the outer and inner core. And they're able to continue their journey through the Earth all the way to the other side. The S waves, as they move, they've been kind of sheared off in the middle. And uh, it looks like those S waves aren't going to make it to the other side in the same way that the P waves did. So pretty interesting. So let's kind of look at a little bit of a two-dimensional model of what is happening inside here. What's another way to represent this uh, as far as how these waves behave? 